Hello and welcome back to Most Wanted Music 2023. Today is about new technologies and how we can use them to reach our personal needs, goals and dreams. I'm Jonna and your stage host for today. And back in high school, my friends and I would exchange CDs in order to share our favorite music. Sounds almost prehistoric right now, right? Because today we just open an app and it spits out a personalized playlist, a service I use almost daily, and I must admit, sometimes it even feels like the algorithm knows me better than most of my friends or even myself. The technology feels like magic to me because there are no human ears involved. It's just an artificial intelligence listening to music, finding patterns, characteristics, and finding something new. Musayo creates AI and machine learning that does exactly this. Mastermind and former CEO Hazel Savage will give us an outlook on how the humanized music and tech market could look like in five to ten years. Give a really big and warm round of applause for Hazel Savage. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. It's my first go on the clicker. Haven't seen it before now, but I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. Thank you so much. I'm here to deliver a keynote today about artificial intelligence. So hopefully this is the hot topic on everyone's lips, what everyone's talking about. And I will just wait for the keynote to come up on the air. Uh, I'm hoping it's coming up on the big screen. Otherwise, only I can see it, which is slightly less interesting. Um, we'll just give it a second. That is my name. I am Hazel. Hi there. Do we have a little uh, little tech support for the, uh, the the keynote to come up on the screen? There we go. Boom. Done. We got there. Thank you so much. Okay. So as I mentioned, I am Hazel Savage, and this is my keynote about artificial intelligence. Just to introduce myself, I was the CEO and co-founder of a music AI tech startup called Musio. We were based in Singapore, and we sold to SoundCloud in 2022. So I am currently the VP of Music Intelligence at SoundCloud. So that's, uh, that's how I got from Musio to SoundCloud. And we started Musio back in 2018, and we were basically working on the problem of I used to work in a record store in the UK, and all new music used to come out at 9 a.m. on a Monday morning, because I was one of the people putting those CDs on the shelves ready for sale. And then what we saw was, you know, back in 2018, Spotify would say, we're getting 60,000 new tracks a day on the platform. And then a few years later, they said, we have 80,000 new tracks a day. And I think their current press release says they have 100,000 tracks a day uploaded to their platform. And I was like, how do we go from like five CD singles a week to 100,000 tracks a day without causing a few issues in our data pipelines and how we discover music and how we listen to music? So that's why we came up with Musio. But first of all, I'm also going to define, when I say that Musio is an AI company, what exactly do I mean here? So we often talk about, you might have heard the terms AI, ML, bandied around, uh, much to my CTO and co-founder's uh, disappointment. Artificial intelligence, AI, is just simply anything that appears to be mimicking the act of human intelligence. This could be anything from, you know, think about sci-fi films, robots, things like that. It's a very, very broad term that we use in the music industry that's not super helpful. Um, what we often mean is ML machine learning, so the act of training a computer to be able to repeat a behavior that appears to mimic human intelligence. So I use AI because it's a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit more popular, but if you see the terms AI and ML, sometimes they're interchangeable and sometimes they're not. So again, back to Musio. We already talked about the problem statement and why we decided to build the company. Going from that very, very early batch of songs very, very few songs released on a weekly and a monthly basis, right the way up to 100,000 songs a day. And SoundCloud itself has a catalog of over 475, 375 million tracks. That's a lot of music. Even with the best will in the world, you could not listen to every single track on SoundCloud ever. 
So I was like, how, how do we solve this? How can we get AI to help? You know, something that used to be very manageable is now unmanageable. How do we manage it? And this is how we decided to approach the problem at Museo. We decided to use artificial intelligence to listen to the audio files. So take MP3s, take WAV files, and basically turn it into a series of spectrographic transformations from which we're able to extract information. The way that I like to think of it, that's, it's been described to me this way, that as someone with a more music background, I find very helpful. If you look at a waveform front on, and SoundCloud, famous for their waveforms, when you look at it, you can kind of see where it fades in, you can see where it fades out, you can kind of see the, the peaks and troughs where there might be sort of breakdowns and build-ups. And you can also possibly even see areas of repetition that might represent your verses and choruses. But what you can't tell by looking at a simple waveform is whether there's a vocal on that track. You also can't tell the genre of a track by looking at a waveform. But all of that information is there. It's just stacked in a way that you can't see it. So we've often described Museo as instead of looking at a waveform front on, it's like we've gone up and over the top and we're looking down. And all of that other information is stacked in the spectrographic transformations. And once we're able to teach a computer to be able to read these, we're able to get it to automate knowing things about the track. That's what we do. So Museo itself, we now work B2B with 75 customers worldwide, all different countries. We've tagged over 500 million tracks to date, and we do 5,000 audio reference searches per day. So basically, we invented a product that it turns out a lot of people were having a very, very similar challenge with. And one of the reasons why we ended up selling the business to SoundCloud, well, First of all, they let us keep all our customers. And I was very, very proud that we were able to keep the technology in the market and not have to shut everyone else down. But also, SoundCloud were one of our biggest customers when we sold the platform. Because they have so many tracks, you know, 375 million. But also, they started, they're 16 years old now. They started back in the day when there wasn't as much music being released. And people were not uploading that music with any type of data, not thinking it was important to have the hashtags and the genre tags right to be able to put in playlists and to be discovered. And there are some fantastic examples of artists who've uploaded their music onto SoundCloud, started on SoundCloud, but we didn't really know about them until they were super famous. So Billie Eilish famously was uploading music to SoundCloud before she was discovered. Louis Capaldi was uploading music. He actually was discovered by his manager on SoundCloud. So we know that we kind of create this area where artists feel like they can experiment, where they can upload music. And that's what we want to do. So we started out with SoundCloud as a client, and we were just tagging their database letting them know what genres they had, letting them know what key they were in, whether they had vocals, how good the recording quality was. And SoundCloud found that really valuable. How do you manage 375 million songs? And then more recently, we've done extra things that we're super proud of, such as a program we call First Fans. And this is where I start to talk about what I call AI for good. And it's the idea that Everyone who uploads their music to SoundCloud through Next Pro, which is our distribution platform, how do we make sure that they don't end up with zero plays? How do we solve for that problem? So what we're doing is we're using the same technology, the same fingerprinting transformation looking down on the waveform. We're using that to look at everything that gets uploaded and then to analyze that fingerprint and find a group of 100 people that we think, based on their listening behavior, would like this track. And then we're able to introduce the tracks to the audience. And we're trying to get 100 plays for every single track uploaded. So we're in beta at the minute, and it's been going well. Um, lots of people are finding that previously they might have uploaded tracks and got zero plays, and now they're finding that they're finding an audience. So solving for that cold start problem in the music industry is something we're very passionate about, and we think that AI can help. Because of course, we could hire a 1,000 curators, and we still couldn't manage to do it manually through playlisting. So that's one of the initiatives that we're working on. I'll give you more of an example of how the technology looks, um, and you can play along at home, which is, which is a fun one. And, um, 
I have chosen for my example the song by the Scorpions because we are in Germany and I am also a massive classic rock fan. Um, all my examples are pretty much hair metal. So I apologize for anyone who's uh, seen me speak before or is not a big Bon Jovi fan um, because I am a little one note when it comes to that. Um, but here you go, Here's, here you can see an example of our technology in progress. So what I did was I went to YouTube and I grabbed the, um, the Scorpions track, Rock You Like a Hurricane. If you don't know it, absolute banger. Just going to put it out there. And uh, of the um, several million listeners, I make up a, a, a portion of that, certainly. And so what I did was I grabbed the URL from the YouTube video and I went to the very uh, the, the lovely bit.ly link where the G has jumped down to the next line, but bit.ly forward slash Musio tag. And that takes you straight to the demo on the Musio website, which is free to use. You can drop a track in. So anyone who wants to experiment with, uh, with a little AI tool themselves, this is a great way to, uh, to get into it without having to stress too much. So what I did was I went to our demo, I dropped in the URL for the track, and in real time, we will fingerprint that audio and we will generate these tags based on the audio file itself. So we don't pull any other data from YouTube. We're not calling Spotify's API to get data. We're simply looking at the audio file, albeit in this case, an audio file from YouTube. So what you can see is here, I've taken a screenshot from our website of what the tag results look like. So the first thing we do is we look at the content type. Um, when we first started the business, we simply told people whether something was music or not music. Um, but as we kind of grew and got more and more customers, such as BMG, Hypnosis, Sony Music, we realized that a lot of people have catalogs that have much more than just music or broken audio files. Quite often they'll, be ha they'll have podcasts, they'll have sound effects, they'll have samples. So we actually now have eight different content types. So we get a little bit more granular. So what we've got here is music and then in brackets, 76%. Now the percentages in this demo are how confident the AI is that that tag is correct. So it's not like it's 76% music and something percent something else. It's just 76% sure that's an accurate tag, which I'm happy with. It is music, that's a good tag. And then we get to the genres. Of course, back to my old favorite, we've got metal, classic metal, and rock. And you can see that is 80%, 61%, and 44%. Now, what this lets you do is it lets you Decide if you want to display your data, say you're a streaming service or you're a label. Maybe you have like primary genre and subgenre. Maybe you're only allowed to show two genres, in which case we drop the one with the lowest score. Or maybe you say, just don't show anything below 50% surety because yes, it's a good tag, but I'm, I'm happy with the first two tags. So having these percentages lets our, client, lets our clients be flexible with the data that they have as well. Um, it also might be that you just say, you know, anything over 80% is a primary genre, everything below is not. And actually, if that percentage surety drops below 40%, on the demo, we add the prefix with elements of, because we don't feel like we can claim it's a, a primary genre below 40%. So as well as genre, we have an energy spectrum, we have moods, we have an emotion spectrum, we have instruments. And these are really the instruments that the AI can hear within the track. And then we get down to my favorite, the vocal section. So first of all, we'll tell you whether a track is vocal or instrumental. Um, lots of the catalogs we work with are production music, so lots of instrumental tracks, and then lots of labels, lots of vocal tracks. We have vocal register. You can display this as sounds like male, sounds like female, mixed. You can display it as high register, low register, whatever works best for your catalog. And then how much vocal is on the track? There's a high presence of vocal. And then in this case, go Scorpions, no auto-tune. Um, probably because maybe at the time they were recording, it was, uh, it was not, not the done thing slash available. But obviously, you'll see it a lot more if you drop in some modern, modern hip hop tracks in there. So again, these vocal tags let you understand a lot about a song without having to manually listen. And we currently do this to the tune of about 5 million tracks a day globally across all of our clients. So lots of new music every day and lots of it needs data. And then the sentence at the bottom, everything in bold is also a tag. And you can see here that what it, we've said it's medium quality. 
And what we're referring to is the recording. Medium quality, it's not a judgment. Um, if you drop in Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, same thing shows up. It's more indicative of the era of which this was recorded. Um, and also you need to factor in for the fact that sometimes a YouTube upload is not necessarily the best quality audio. But when we're working directly with the catalog and we have access to the original source files, sometimes that metric can change. So we know it's a medium quality recording. It's in E minor. It's a tempo of 126 beats per minute. And a good use case for this track might be extreme sports. Not particularly an extreme sports fan myself, but I am a big fan of the Scorpions. So we do this sort of 20 to 30 pieces of metadata per track. And it really helps our clients depending on what they want to do. So we have another client based in the US called BeatStars, who get about 20,000 songs, or should I say beats, uploaded to their platform every day. And the idea is other rappers and producers can go in, search the beats, pay for them, collaborate on them, and then create their own music. Now, one of the challenges BeatStars had was that as people, producers and users were uploading their beats, they weren't really adding any metadata to it at all. Apart from outside the odd hashtag, they'd add Drake type beat, Chance type beat, um, which when you're trying to search through beats is not super helpful. They wanted to know the BPM. They wanted to know if there was a key. They wanted to know if there was any vocals on them to start with, so that when their users search their database, they can be much, much more specific about what they want and therefore much more likely to find what they want and then much more likely to make a purchase, download that music, or collaborate. So we're looking at very kind of real world applications for this technology. We have a bunch of other use cases on the website for specific clients from labels to sync to production music. I also just wanted to briefly touch on a little bit about more broadly in the AI space, music AI space, what I'm excited about in the future, forward looking. And I know we didn't touch on it yet, but I've described Musio in some detail. And what we consider ourselves is a descriptive AI company. So we're not downloading huge databases of music and asking an AI to produce tracks that sound similar to the tracks that we've just shown it. We're using AI to be descriptive, to tell us things about the existing audio. I also personally believe that with over 100,000 songs released every day, there is no shortage of music, and therefore not necessarily a huge market for AI-generated music. I'm sometimes on my own in this opinion. I've held this opinion for a long time. Um, this opinion has become more fashionable recently. But we generally break AI then into these generative categories where the AI is creating music, and then descriptive and assistive AI, which is what Musio does. And actually at Musio, we worked with Rolls-Royce, the jet engine, not the car manufacturer, two different companies. I learned that very recently, and I also did not get a free car uh, when we worked with them. But they've brought out an ethical AI framework called the Aletheia framework. And what this does is it allows you to plug in elements of your business to basically make decisions around whether you were using AI ethically or not. And it really distilled for me something I'd been thinking about AI for a long time, which is, Humans love to write music. We love to create music. I've been playing guitar since I was 13. I am not very good, but that doesn't matter because when I was 13, I got my first guitar and I taught myself and I played in my bedroom for at least two years before I did a single show and I never really made any money or a career from it. But we don't need to because humans will do it anyway just because we enjoy it. So. Do we need to replace something that people already love to do? Perhaps not. But then also, I always think of AI in terms of, is it something that it's possible for a human to do? So humans can create music quite easily. Lots of examples right through history of humans creating fantastic music. Um, what a human can't do is tag the metadata genre, key, BPM, to five million tracks a day. Even if I hired a thousand people, I still couldn't do that volume. And it would be really inaccurate as well. People get tired and hungry after lunch and their accuracy drops right off, but not the AI. So I kind of consider this work a little bit like drudgery. And if it's too drudgery, if it's too boring, it's too tedious, humans don't really want to do it. I tagged a thousand songs, it took me two weeks. 
And I did that just to see what it was like, to see if AI really was a 10x better solution. And I believe it is, and I think our clients do as well. So the idea is, if it's not something that humans can physically do, or not something they want to do, then AI is a great solution. So I've been using that framework to think about the AI companies and the future of AI that I'm excited about. It's not a particularly exciting slide, but here are a couple of logos of the companies that I am excited about. Full disclosure, I'm an investor in a couple of these companies because um, I do a little bit of investing. That's my, that's my side hustle these days. Um, but ones I wanted to talk about and the reasons why I think they're exciting. So the first one, Audio Shake. Um, Audio Shake, another fantastic female founder based in the US. Um, it's another AI company. And they had a breakthrough using artificial intelligence to separate out the stems of various audio tracks. So if you don't have the original masters or you don't have access to them and you drop them in audio shake, it'll break it up into the individual instruments and the vocals separately. Now, a lot of people have been claiming to do this for quite a few years and I've tried all of them and most of them were terrible. But Audio Shake seemed to have had something of a, of a technical breakthrough in the last few years because there's no bleed through of the audio. It's very, very clean when they separate the, uh, the stems out. And also, the stems don't lose anything in quality. They're usable. So a lot of labels and companies are using this to you know, pitch in back catalog where they don't have an instrumental version, but maybe a brand has asked for it. There was a really cool example on the founder's LinkedIn profile where um, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, uh, they had a video of him playing guitar along with one of his old recordings where they no longer have the masters, they've lost them. Um, and I was even more excited to find out that Metallica, who also have an investment fund, have invested in Audio Shake. And they are known haters of technology uh, for anyone who remembers the old Napster days. So I think Audio Shake's really exciting and one to check out. They also have a demo on their website so you can drop a track in and try it for yourself. Um, Unheard, a UK-based uh, company, also using AI, but really more in the music marketing space. And I was so excited about this company because when they first showed me their product demo, it's basically an app that you sign up as an independent artist, it pulls in all your data, and then it auto-generates a to-do list. You should pitch to this gig, you should pitch to this playlist, you should send out this press release. And I was like, this is incredible because not only are we getting 100,000 tracks uploaded every day, these are the artists who, they're not music marketing experts, they're not managers, they're creatives. So how do we scale that side of the business? How do we tell these artists what to do and help them and guide them in their careers? So it's a super exciting product and tool designed for independent artists. That really appealed to me. And then also Master Channel another AI company and a, a, a most recent discovery of mine. It's essentially AI mastering. Now, it's not dissimilar to Lander, who've been around for a while, but their speciality is spatial mastering at scale in an affordable way. I think it's a really cool tool. I think it's going to, you know, especially as we look at that whole part of the ecosystem I talked about, where if we have 100,000 tracks a day, how are we going to market these artists? How are we going to master all these tracks? So I think Master Channel is a great solution, especially in the spatial audio area. And then the last one, Make It. Despite what I just said about not being a huge fan of generative AI, Make It is a generative AI company. And I think that's because even if it's not the first thing we think of, we cannot ignore this space. But what I like to see, and what I like to see with a company like Make It, is a really experienced team, ex-TikTok, ex-Cameo, working on a legal use case of the technology. I don't want to see people scraping streaming services to build their models. I want to see people who've done direct deals that are contributing back to the artists. Or, in the case of Make It, they're not using AI-generated beats. The beats are more like beat stars. They're producer-made beats. And they're all on the platform. And then essentially, the AI element is when you sing over the top, when you rap over the top. It's AI edited tools and it's AI edited effects. And um, one of my favorite things about Make It, um, and I love, a, I love a TMI, I turned 40 this year, is when you sign up for Make It on their website, it asks for your age. And I think it's like, you know, if you're under 13, 
you can't sign up. But then it's like, you know, 13 to 15, uh, 16 to 20, 20 to 22, and then 22 plus. So I think that, that told me everything I needed to know about. Um, I'm definitely in the 22 plus category. And this is who the audience is, uh, is aimed at. This is a large way that Gen Z are looking at music and incorporating it into their work streams. So those are some companies that I'm interested in. I just follow the music press. I follow Music Biz Worldwide, Music Week, the Music Network, and I'm always looking for new companies. And uh, there's a lot of people moving into the fan and creator space. I think people are realizing, you know, if we had 10 years of um, CD and cassette, then we had 10 years of downloading, and we've had 10 years of streaming, What's the next evolution of music? And a lot of people believe it's the connection between the fan and the artist. If artists can find their fans directly through the first fans program at SoundCloud or other ways, then really that's how you build a sustainable career as an artist. And that's very interesting to me. So I hope to be adding more logos to this slide as I meet more and more exciting companies in the future. And that's it. That's officially my keynote. Um, I love to connect with people. So if you'd like to add me on LinkedIn, this is, this is my name on LinkedIn. And um, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. And it's been an absolute pleasure. I believe there's a Q&A session happening next, just around the corner in Palais. So I will be there in, uh, in short measure. And thank you for having me. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>